the last lecture, we removed the move.cs file that was on each single sheep prefab and replaced it with a single for loop in the update that was on the spawner. So in this lecture, we're actually going to move forward and now turn it into a true parallel processing algorithm. So let's go back into our spawn code. OK, so let's get started putting this job system in here. Now, uh, as I said, it's already something that's built into Unity, so we don't need any extra packages for it. But what we do need to do is create a structure that has the execution inside it for the job. You can't use classes because classes aren't guaranteed to sit in the same spot in memory all the time. And to parallel process anything, it needs to live in the same spot in memory. Again, that's something we'll talk about in detail down the track. So let's first of all, let's create a struct. So we'll create a struct called move job. And it's going to be of type I job parallel for transform. Now, as you can see, Visual Studio doesn't like that much. And that's because we need to put in an execute inside of here. So we'll create a public void execute. And the execute is actually the method that is going to run and do the work for us. So this is the part that actually gets processed in parallel for each object. The transforms themselves are going to be inside what's called a transform access array. And the array holds transform accesses or gives us access to the transforms that are attached to our game objects. So we basically have to pass through the transforms like that. Now, if you're starting to think that this is looking a little bit strange, wait till we get to the ECS because the code is going to seem extremely foreign at first, but just hang in there and hopefully it'll start to make sense for you. Now, inside of this execute, we're basically going to do what we were doing inside of our update, which was to change the position of the sheep. So it'll be transform.position plus equals 0.1 F. Now that is basically our speed or how much we're incrementing our Z factor by. Now let's just go back down here and remind us what we're doing. So we're doing this here, transform.translate. What we have up here is something completely different with our transforms. We have all the transform data, but we don't have all of these fancy methods that we had before, such as the translate, which means that we have to do a lot of the mathematics ourselves. So we've got hold of the position, we have hold of the rotation, but we just don't have a method called translate. So the same way that we can call a translate and change it in the Z, is doing this. So transform.position and updating it by uh, 0.1f, which is what our basic kind of speed is that we're using. And it's going to be transform.rotation multiplied by new vector. And then this is where our z vector comes in. Now that should be a vector 3. So let me just change that for you to a 3 that's going to update your position. So this here is performing exactly the same task as this line here, as this translate, which is basically saying we want to change the position along the Z forward axis of the object. OK, next we then need to test where we are. So if transform dot position dot z is greater than 50, then what we're going to do is put transform dot position equals new vector 3 and put it back at the beginning. So that's going to be transform dot position dot x 0 and then minus 50 for our z value. And notice we've left out the um, randomness of the x again, because we're not going to actually use that. OK, so that's our um, move job. And this is the structure of it, The this part here. Now, this actually doesn't run. This is just a structure. OK, so a structure, if you're not familiar with structures, is that 
structures kind of existed in C, whereas classes then became something in C++. So um, they're very, very similar. Uh, so we've created one or defined one. Now we actually have to declare a data object as a type of move job. So down here, we'll create move job. So that will be called move job with a lowercase m. That's our job. And then we also, in order to run the job, we need a job handle. So job handle, let's call it move handle like that. Okay, so move job in this case needs to have a initialization as does the handle. And we're going to do that down inside of our update. Instead of our for loop that we had, we're actually going to get rid of that because we're not doing it anymore. We're doing it with the job. So that will work like this. So move job will equal new move job. Now move job is a structure. Okay, so we actually have to declare it like that with the uh, squiggly brackets. And then we have to create our move handle. So just creating the job will not run it. We have to create a handle to the job and then actually schedule the job. So it's move job dot schedule or schedule, however you pronounce that. And we're passing through the transforms, which we have to yet set up because these transforms, remember, if we go back up to here, is a transform axis. So we've got to pass through a transform axis array that we will call transforms. So to declare that, we'll just get back up here and we'll also add that in. So that will be a transform access array, transforms like that. And we also need to get all of the sheep's transforms. Now, currently you can see that we've got all of our sheep up here that we're getting. And we no longer really need all of those sheep stored anywhere. So instead of that, what I'm going to just change that to transforms. So transform array for all sheep transform. Then down inside our start, we will go all sheep transform equals new transform array. Again, this is just the transforms that you know and love, but now we're going to put those transforms into the transform access array. So this down here can become game object sheep equals the instance. And then we can go all sheep transforms at position I equals the sheep dot transform. So the transform component that's going to populate that transform array. And then what we do with that is use it to put those transforms into this transform access array here. So that will be transforms equals a new transform access array constructed out of our all sheep transforms like that. That then gets passed through to the job and these transforms that come through here one at a time back up in our execute. So this transform here is just one of the transforms out of that transform access array. And this is getting us the positions and the rotations for just one object. Okay, so this is essentially one piece of code that would run inside of a for loop. Um, but you're going to force it to run like a for loop just by calling this schedule down here and then passing through the whole array. Right, okay, we've done that. So we've moved it. And what we need to do after that is to complete the job. So move handle is a handle to the job that we've started. Before we go ahead and actually run another update or allow another scheduling for moving things again, we need to call complete on the job handle. And we're gonna do that down in here. So void 
and we'll create a late update. And inside of there, we will put move handle dot complete like that. That will then allow this to actually run again. So you can see that there's no sort of if the job is still running, don't do it again. Um, this actually achieves that kind of code for you instead. It just is not going to allow you to schedule another job of this move job type until this complete has happened and everything has finished running. Okay, so then after we've done that, we're going to run a void on destroy for when we're finished with everything. And we're actually going to clean up some memory. So transforms dot dispose. With C sharp, you'll be so used to it cleaning up memory for you because that's what it is really good at. When you're working with native code and stuff that's sort of compiled at a lower level and these things that you're going to be using in the ECS, such as this transforms, uh, transform access array, you actually have to dispose of it. If you don't dispose of it, and in fact, do this yourself, leave out that method and run everything, you'll get an error saying that you've got a memory leak um, because you've got memory that hasn't been allocated or has been allocated and it's been trying to be written to or it's been overwritten when it shouldn't be overwritten because it's still actually allocated inside of here. All right, so save that. Now you've got all that code and we now have our move job. Let's go back into Unity and we're going to press play. So we don't have to do anything extra because our spawn manager already has our sheet prefab going through there. Let's press play and let's have a look at our frames per second. And you can see that we're now getting up to like 36, 37 I was getting before. So we've actually increased our frame rate again with that same number of sheep by using that parallel processing to push them through um, their move job, which is really simple. It's just moving them forward a little bit each time. Okay, so you've now seen how we can get a little bit more grunt and optimization out of Unity in the classic sense of creating game objects and moving them around. In the next lecture, we're going to come back and we're going to implement the ECS. And you're going to see a lot of similarities in what we've already been working with and what we're working towards.